So, here I am again with another DC Comics ramble for all of you, and I thought to myself, why not do one for one of my personal favorite characters in DC Comics? The Question. Now, for those of you who don't know, I am actually a massive Question fan, primarily from his appearance in the Justice League Unlimited cartoon. But this one was definitely fun to read. The Deaths of Vic Sage is the latest miniseries in the Question's line, rounding out at about four issues in this miniseries, done by the team of Jeff Lemire, Dennis Cohen, Bill Sankowicz, and Chris Sotomayor under DC's Black Label. I actually got these in a nice little magazine format, so they look really well done with the much bigger and larger pages. But also, I love the art style for this one, because going through all the different question comics, they all have their own unique art style, and this one here takes the cake with this nice rougher, pencil sketch to look to it with the much muted, darker colors, which really lends to the maturity of this little mini-series, especially considering it's under the black label, which DC primarily uses for more of its darker titles before, well, after they shut down the Vertigo line. More on that later. But, in all honesty, this one was the most baffling of the question stories, in my personal opinion, because this one actually has Vic Sage who works as a reporter by day and the vigilante the question by night, investigating what seems like a deep, dark hole, which is whispering things to him, whispering of different names like Victor Zaz, Charlie, Vic Sage. It is whispering his name, and he finds evidence of other masks that all bear the resemblance to what he wears on a daily basis. So. Somehow the question winds up going through different periods of time through this, different time periods of Hub City, where each time he has always been the defender, the man with no face against what is known as the man with a thousand faces, which was the face of pure evil. And it ranges from modern day Hub City to the old American West, all the way to the 1940s where he worked as a private investigator. In all honesty, this whole idea of just there being a question throughout centuries facing off against this indecipherable foe, the man with no face versus the man with a thousand faces, the faces of pure evil, is an interesting concept. I'm not going to lie to you guys. It's an interesting concept, especially considering Vic's character, how he has that more of a black and white mentality here. And honestly, I loved every second of this miniseries as I was reading it. I was wondering, what's going to change? Not to mention the different way it is written. For instance, if you look in vault number three, when he's in the 1940s, it actually has this nice little paper script written look to it like a detective noir story. And that's one of the things I liked about the question is that he's not a typical vigilante. His stories primarily play out as like detective noir style. Which makes him stand out, in my personal opinion. And I've collected nearly all of his issues, from the old 36-issue 1980 series, all the way to simple one-shots, and even mini-series like Question Quarterly, and the 2006 second series that he received. So in all honesty, you all can tell that Question holds a special place in my heart as one of the first big characters I collected for DC Comics. But in all honesty, I would definitely recommend this if you want a weird, time-jumping, different existential story, where Vic at first believed that it was one person as the face of pure evil, and if he could just kill this man that had corrupted his city, then it would be over. But no. The moral is that there is evil, and that there is good inside every person. The man with a thousand faces is simply just evil as itself, a force of nature, and questions unending struggle against it. The funny thing was, is that this miniseries was actually made as a tribute to Dennis O'Neill, who sadly passed away on June 11th, 2020, at the age of 81 years old. And Dennis Cohen actually made this miniseries as a way to honor him. In my opinion, that makes this one even more worthwhile of a read. Because in the back of issue four, there is a nice little memorial piece to Dennis O'Neill. In all honesty, you guys, 
I'd recommend this even if you're not a question fan, just for an interesting detective noir story with crazy supernatural bits thrown in here and there. I'll be back again with another DC Comics ramble for all of you. In the meantime, stay tuned. This is Rambling Collector, signing off.